Facebook ads are a powerful tool. You can do incredible things with them. You can build audiences. Uh, but if you don't have the content right, if you don't have an engaging message, you're not engaging people in the right way, in the right order, it's not going to work as well. So talk a little bit about your mindset, how it starts, you know, as it relates to the content and, and where you start with it. Yeah, so a lot of clients that I've worked with in the past and just what I've been able to apply into digital marketing has been psychology principles, uh, studying the old school mentors like Eugene Schwartz, um, implementing these things that a lot of people don't talk about nowadays because a lot of people don't understand them. When I started hearing uh, Ty back in the day and, and then diving into Charlie Munger talk about cognitive biases, um, I started just trying to apply these things into digital marketing. And <laughs> one of the most interesting things I found is when selling information products and working with Grant, uh, what he would tell me and, and what he would preach to the world is omnipresence. So I had to figure out a way to digitize a sales process be around somebody we were trying to sell in a way that wasn't annoying because I didn't want to be one of the, the, I call them the dick pill ads, which are you know, constantly the same ad in front of you, direct response ads, uh, just the same thing again and again and again and again. So I wanted to avoid being the digital clipboard salesperson. I wanted to contextually sell and I wanted to do that in a way without being ignored. You know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest principles of psychology, when somebody's conditioned to ignore an ad, you wouldn't want to try to present your message in the form of an ad because it wouldn't work. So Facebook and Instagram, they gave us these tools first over, before all the other platforms did to distribute your content. And the initial objectives I would use right inside of the ads managers, a practical tip, we would run engagement campaigns. And then eventually, you know, in the most recent times, we run video view objectives as well, optimized for through play. And long story short, if you go into the audience section, we, you find that besides just customer lists that you can upload, uh, besides just retargeting our website traffic, which continued to, to go down in our probability to actually retarget people from ad blockers and from, from you know, people just not wanting to be retargeted. Uh, content was the way to go. We decided to play into the bias of these platforms, which if you think about it, they want you to keep people on their platforms engaged and they give you the tools to retarget people. So I took the logic of what an email list is and I, I just brought it into Facebook. I said, you know what? Uh, I'm a marketing automation guy. I, I believe in segmenting databases and then you know, sending people contextual emails and that drives a lot of sales. Why, why not digitize that, be omnipresent and handle the beliefs of the people that we're trying to sell so they can be framed the right way to buy our products when we do make our direct response ads. Uh, eventually, I, I call this concept, uh, the actual method, the Venus flytrap method. Uh, I, I, I try to avoid being a digital clipboard salesperson. I try to avoid at all costs and any product I find this works, e-commerce and information products, to just be the pitch man. I don't want to just be there saying, hey, sign up for my webinar, sign up for my free PDF, you know, go download my, my fucking master class or even worse, the people just say, go, go sign up for the course. Um, I, I believe in respecting people in the sales process, which is what content, what content can do. And then on top of that, the tactical side of it, the platforms give us the ability to add people to lists to later retarget with our direct response ads. So I found that I could spend less money when I would actually make my call to actions. I'd have, meaning I'd have cheaper CPAs and I'd have a lower budget level. Uh, in addition to that, people would be more responsive. So I'd avoid negative feedback. I'd have ads that would you know, run evergreen for years, depending on the ad. Um, have a few examples with Dan Locke as, as great uh, you know, visual aids I can reference here. In addition to that, I just found that we would get a higher retention of customers for life buying more product from the people that we were selling from due to the fact that we were just respecting people in the sales process. We let them get to know us and then we would make our call to action. So it became extremely effective. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of rabbit holes we can go down, but I'll leave that for your questions. <laughs> That's super interesting. So you talk about respecting the customer and you're, you're doing that through through content, essentially, right? Through through providing them with valuable content that, that may not have the cell built into it at that time. Is that is that what you would say? Correct, Agreed? yeah, because like a helicopter, right? It, you know, this happens to me every single time I go on a plane and I'm looking out the window or even once a month nowadays, I, I want to get in a helicopter and I want to see it from above, right? I'm here in my penthouse in Miami and I, I love the view that I can have from above because it's the same thing you want to have in your marketing efforts. Most people, they think, Direct response ad, that's, that's like living life through a first-person perspective. Okay, When you take yourself out and you look at the overall process, if I start with a piece of content and I create a sequence of two to three videos that I want people to go through before they see my call to actions and my conversion campaigns, well, it's quite simple to do when you're looking at it from above. You know, Because if you're, if you're running a piece of content towards a cold audience, you're accumulating people into your list that you can retarget with your direct response ads for a penny to two pennies tops. You know, if, I, if I could screen share here, I'd show you my uh, my hundredth of a penny, my two hundredth of a penny cost per engagements or cost per video views. And my point being, that's when we then manage the perspective of the person with more content. 
So every piece of content that is, is posted on your page is strategically posted for two different reasons. Uh, to manage the future objections the person will have when you make your call to actions before they become objection, and to manage the belief system and the overall way that people are going to view the opportunity to join in. In my case, it's always biz opportunities or information products or expanding their awareness in a particular area. But for e-com, it's the same thing. If I can make people aware of their problem, how they need to see the world, how seeing the world that they're the way they're currently viewing it could be wrong, or that they could sh they could shift that, or other people like them have shifted it, and then give them that opportunity to shift. Um, it's all kinds of cool psychological opportunities uh, to leverage in your Facebook advertising. People need experiences to change their identities and people always want to confirm with either the identity they are by projecting against what they see or by agreeing with it on the timeline. So long story short, content is an extremely powerful tool uh, to, to once again, help frame people the right way for when you make a call to actions, increase the probability of the sale. Uh, so, so it works through, and through all kinds of industries. <laughs> very, very interesting. So just talking practically about, about layering experiences like that, I think that's, I think that's super interesting. It can be done easily through retargeting essentially where you show someone offer and then you sort of retarget them right away. But you're probably talking about a bit more of, a, of an inception.